Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan J. Reinhardt, and I'm here for War Gaming Recon. So I thought you might like to get a sneak peek at some of the equipment that we use to record it, because in the past I've talked about what some of it is. However, I don't think I've ever actually shown you it, and I definitely have not given you close-up looks at our new equipment. So we're gonna swipe over and uh, get you a look at some of the new equipment and you might notice that this video doesn't have any sort of a uh, Google stuff up here right usually you see in the videos there'll be a slight little watermark that says Google on it that's because we would be doing them live on YouTube we're using some new equipment to record this using an iPhone that I have an iPhone uh, 6s and we've got some new lenses and a microphone and I've talked about that previously so I won't talk about it now but here we get some more footage to show you some of the stuff that we do to actually record the show, both the audio that you get and when we do video, so you can actually see the video. So here we go. So you might think, lights, what is Jonathan doing showing me some lights? Now this is just a regular lamp you could get anywhere. You could get at your Walmart, you could get at Kmart, you could get at Target, you can get it online on Amazon. It's a pretty standard floor lamp you get. This happens to have three bulbs, so it can put a different heights and they all face one way they all face you know the one direction I can't turn them around it's not like an octopus lamp which we do have another part down here in the studio but this is an example of what you can do if you want to create your own pictures say you have models that you want to take pictures of or an army you have terrain maybe you want to do a little video you want to do your own YouTube channel so these are things that you can do to get good lighting and believe it or not lighting is very important for video you always think about getting a really cool camera. You think about getting the best microphone, the best uh, images and that kind of stuff. But lighting is very important. This is something you can use that you already have, I bet. You must have a lamp around. A directional one like this is good. Now what I did, and let me just turn some of these off. So you're going to see a big difference in the video quality here. But I need you to get a good look inside. So nowadays you would get an LED light right these are not LEDs but these are my dad refers to them as pigtails but these are the, the curly hue ones so these are 13 watts so they use a lot less energy which is great you want to be energy efficient and they also happen to be replacements for 60 watt bulbs those standard ones that you know they were around and so forth so I'm gonna you can see right here got them on Amazon so you can do that and have three and you're going to be momentarily blinded while I put them on. And that is super bright, right? The rest, everything else looks dark just because that is so much light. So I tend to station it right next to the table. You can see some of my daughter's stuff. And I station it such that it angles towards where I sit. Now another piece of equipment is actually down here. So you see, it's an it's an older home, uh, and we'll get a nice power surge protector. Plug in, it gives me a little bit more room, so I can plug that in. I also can plug in my computer and everything. And we have another cable. It goes all the way up, Ooh. and over. You see here, it's connected, and goes right in here. And my father, who is a very handy person. You don't have to be to put one of these up. Put the shop light up for me because it's very dark down here. So that way we get a lot, of, a lot of nice light that comes down here onto the playing surface, which has stuff on it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we get some good directional light here from this. So if I really wanted, I could soften it. They sell kits that you can get, and I've looked at it. They call soft boxes. Basically, it's white sheer fabric that you put over the light so it's not so harsh coming across. And it just... It, gives it a more gentle look so you get the nice brightness but it doesn't really focus in too much we use this also for the live stream so a lot of our recordings are recorded live you can watch them online whether they're on Facebook or YouTube or wherever when we have a guest that's what we do recorded live that way so good lighting is very important so we kind of get this and if we record during the game you can see we get through these two windows one here and one here we get some really good background soft light. Now ideally you want three points of light. You want something above you, a something a little bit behind you, something just off to the side. So ideally I'd have 
this set of lights right here. I'd have something kind of just above or maybe reflecting and then I'd have something next to the really old fan. I apologize for that. But something over here on the side. So I'd get it from everywhere and you want to have some shadows of course because if everything's light it's not going to look as great so you do need some shadows. Here's the table where I play games and do all sorts of stuff. Cigar box battle mat which was a nice upgrade from the green felt from the blue felt for naval games and the black felt for space and this is just some um, roof shingles kind of stuff it's um plywood really that they've done and I'm gonna show you guys I'll cover this up underneath the table and the lighting might not be so great so we're just gonna pull this back and angle down so if we go underneath the table you're gonna see this is just a folding table, right? With the stuff on it. You can get one of these four foot tables anywhere. So the plywood extends out to create that nice six foot distance, the four feet. Of course, it's a six foot table. We did an episode about this a while ago. The idea from this came from our friend Court, who suggested it. Now let's talk about audio quality. Here's a piece of equipment that we're using right here, and we like a lot. Give you guys a little better light over here. This is a Blue Yeti. Not the best microphone in the business, but really good for what we do. It's stylish looking. It's very heavy though. So often you can't do what we're doing here with this. They call it a boom arm. You can't have that usually because it's so heavy that they just sag. This mic is great because in addition to being here, I can talk on this side. I can have someone else talking on the other side, which is why we got it. It also has a mode you can do where it'll capture sound all the way around. Bands like to use it for that reason. Very sensitive though. So if you're really close to it, it picks up every little sound. And this room's not treated, right? It's a lot of hard surfaces. The wood paneling, hello 70s, <laughs> is here. So sound will hit it and bounce right off just like a ball so it goes whack whack and bounces right off so you need to be close to these mics but you don't want to be too close i'm asthmatic so i'm a heavy breather and you would get a lot of sounds like this if i was really close <gasps> to combat that you get something called a pop filter i've talked about them before you can make one out of pantyhose and a wire hanger this is a uh, one that's made for uh, it's compatible to work with a blue yeti it's not made by them, it's made by Alphonics, but it's cheaper than the one that Blue makes. Also have this, this is upside down, but it's called a shock mount. Think of it like uh, an egg carton, how they cradle your the eggs that you buy at the store. Same thing, so whenever you tap on anything, any vibrations, the mic wiggles, right? And think of it this way, like if you put your hand in front of your mouth and you blow, you go, you can feel that on your hand. All that air, when you speak, it's called a plosive. Sounds like B's and D's and P's make it. But also any adjustments on the table. You might put your arm down on the table, be like, oh, the vibration comes up and it feels it. And that it impacts the sound of the audio. So you don't want that. You want a nice clean sound. And ideally something like this would be completely isolated from the surfaces so that you would never have any of that. And the closest you can come is a shock mount where it does its best to isolate it so you see these wires right here They're actually more like um nylon almost like basketball netting but they have some tension so they kind of cradle it so it's put into this and then this is connected into the boom arm which is a new thing i got it's a road psa1 boom arm they run a hundred dollars which is ridiculous right but it's strong enough to support the yeti which is why you need it, it can clamp on to your table like we've done here with this d-clamp or you can drill a hole and mounted in your desk or whatever and you get full range of motion Let's see so you can do whatever size height and you can actually do it while using the mic so you're not going to get a whole lot of issues you can see here this is what we're using to do attach the pop filter not ideal it's kind of a little cantilevered ideally you should get a blue pop filter and I think we will it might even change over to the official blue shock mount to mount it because uh, 
this is a little plasticky. It's cheaper. There's metal here, but like some of the connectors are not metal. So for example, this is a little plasticky here. The knob connectors here. I mean, these are metal, but down here. And so these joints, I'm afraid that over time this won't stay in the shape. Blue microphones like the Yeti are really good, but the Yeti is weird. People are used to a lot of microphones that you would talk right into the tip right here, right? This one you have to talk into the side. So if you just had this going straight down with this, you'd actually have the tip pointed towards your mouth and it wouldn't record any sound from me. So I had to do it at the side. So I might need to upgrade to the other stuff. They're more expensive. This pop filter was like 16, I think, maybe 20. The official one's like 25 or 30. And the shock mount here, I think I got it for between 20 and 25. And the official one's like 40 or 50. Don't really want to spend that, but it just, it works better. It's like buying Apple products. They just work. I've shown you some of this stuff before. They call this a dead cat. Terrible name, right? It goes on top of the microphone that I'm using and it keeps ear out using the new lens, which you can't see. It's an Aki lens. It's a 0.45 wide angle. It comes with a 15X macro. So we can take pictures and video closer and we get a nice wider angle. I've shown the case that we have for the Yeti so we can travel with it. Played some games recently. Red Dragon Inn, 1775. Had pictures of that up online. And this is just the general area where we are recording the show. Play games, where all our unboxings are done down here, if they're done by me, any of that kind of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this lengthy look at our studio space and where it is. It's really nice. We get a lot of stuff done down here. Is it ideal? Of course not. In my home and as such, we have sounds from family members. I'm in a basement, so the furnace is right in here. And if that kicks on, it gets very loud. So we have to make adjustments in its basement. It's cold, right? Especially in the winter and really hot in the summer. So we make those kind of adjustments. But we do well. We just recorded episode 200 and thought you might like to see the sneak peek. Mm -hmm.